the distortion in this in this pedal going through the clean channel in my amp. Now this amplifier has three channels. It has a clean channel. Now I like amps with multiple channels. Channels meaning does it have a clean channel, a distorted channel, and then maybe a lead channel or a rhythm, a clean channel, rhythm and lead, but different channels with different controls. Um, 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 some like usually an amp when you buy an amp will have a clean channel and sometimes it'll have a distorted channel or it'll have a clean channel and a button you push for distortion or if it doesn't have multiple channels. I like having multiple channels. For the music that I play live that's important because I gotta get lots of different sounds. This particular amplifier in the back here which you can dial into some other modules and I go through the whole amplifier has um, three channels. It has a clean channel, it's a Hot Rod DeVille, has a dirty channel which I use for rhythm and then it has another channel which is almost like a EQ equalizer but it's like a third level of gain so it's like more distortion over the top distortion and I'll show you how I use that so I like having the three channels that's nice having two or three channels uh, some Mesa Boogies Mark IV are four channels right or some other amps have, have a lot of channels and obviously the more channels you get the more expensive it gets then if each channel has its own EQ on the amp like a channel EQ meaning you know the bass the mid and the treble controls. So you can have channel one with bass, middle, and treble, channel two with all that, then you have three separate EQs, one for each channel. That gets a very expensive as opposed to having three channels with just bass, middle, treb, treble, for, and that controls all three channels. So that means when you're on channel one, you're playing with this EQ setting, whatever you have it set up. Channel two, you're using that same EQ setting if you're clicking from one to the next, unless you stop, go turn it, go to channel two, and a lot of times with multiple channels, you just want to click, have one sound, click, have another sound, click, have another sound. That's, that's what I like. Um, um, so having multiple channels and having each channel with an EQ is nice, but then you're getting into some really expensive amplifiers. Um, um, so again, it's all a matter of what you like and what application are you using it for. If you're sitting home in your room as, in practice, just practicing, you don't need a three channel, 100 watt amp, because tube amp, because number one, it's way too much power for your application, and number two, with the tube amps, you're going to have to crank them to get the good sound. And you're going to be sitting in your room by your, if you're playing just practicing, you're not going to have it that loud. So you just spend a lot of money and you're not using it. Okay? So here's a distorted channel, clean channel in the amp, and the distortion in this Boss. This is the Boss Effect Unit. This is an old one. It's an ME8. They're up to like ME50 now. I just happen to like this one, so I just haven't gotten a new one. I'm going to get some new ones soon, but this is just to show you here. Nice, it's kind of cool, kind of cool distortion. <laughs> Do, and this has a nice. You can hear that reverb. Right, I'm playing through the distorted tone. Now, what I like to do is I like to start getting creative and combining the distortion. In the, in the amplifier with the distortion pedal, right? And then I can get like, wham, a double dose. So I like fooling around with things like that and trying combining different things that you have at your disposal. So that, I like to get creative with your effects and start combining them and chaining them together. And there's a, there's a way you want to chain them in a logical order, and we'll get to that in another module. But just to show you, like this is when, I, when I'm playing live, right? If, I have, if I'm playing a distorted, if I'm playing a clean channel, I'll be, you know, playing my clean. And then if it goes to the heavy part of the song, I step on this, and I can play my distortion. Right? If it gets into the heavy part of the song, and then if I go to a lead channel, now what I'll do is I'll click into the distortion channel on the amp, channel 2, and I can combine that with this distortion in the pedal. So, all right? so now I'm on the, the pedal distortion, and now if I click in with the amp, and now it's really, really saturated. I like that sound. Pick 
pickup, amp distortion, and a little bit more distortion from the pedal. And I could really push it. I'm really driving it now. And it sounds even better loud when I get it, uh, when I get it really loud. And if I want to go over the top one more time, I can now hit the third channel on the amp, which is, remember I said I have three channels, and now it'll, it'll send the amp to the third channel and, add, and have still the distortion from the pedal and channel three, and it's even that much more saturated. And you're not even really realizing the whole thing because it's not loud. You really gotta have the loud tube screaming to get that good tube sound. Quite, quite a lot of tonal variation just from playing with the channels of the amp, the different gain settings, and if you have a distortion pedal or something like that, and you could start messing around with them and get all kinds of things. So, uh, just, I'm just talking about a little reverb. And it's very simple and basic here. I like keeping it simple. That's me. You do what you like, but I'm just showing you to explain what these things are. A little splash of reverb, a little splash of chorus, and then some different distortion. And we'll get into other effects later. We'll talk about compression and delay and all kinds of other stuff. But I just wanted to show you a few basic things. And then this, I have it up on a stand so you could see it. But this would be on the floor when I'm playing live. And then I hit them with my foot as I'm playing. And I can go from one sound to the next to the next to the next. Very cool. So that's that. And this is the foot switch for the amplifier. And this would be uh, channel 1. And if I click it into the yellow channel, that would be channel 2. This, this is yellow. I don't know if you could see that. And then that's channel three. So I could control all three on the floor with a foot switch. That's important to me that I can change channels on the fly when I'm playing. And you'll hear this term a lot, foot switch. That's just a switch you control with your foot um, or foot pedals, right? Um, I just have it on the stands here so you can see it while the camera's, you know, the, <laughs> you know, the camera on the floor, okay? So that's, that's basically um, a big part of my live setup is, 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 is right here and, and the amplifier, which is a big part. But like I always say, the tone is really in your hands and in your heart. And, uh, but it's nice to have some fun effects and cool things. And you can do a lot with this, and I'll show you some other things in coming modules with the whammy pedal. And, and we'll, we'll go crazy. We'll have a real good time and all kinds of things. But these were just getting you started on the basics. So with your amps, you know, you might want to experiment with multiple channel amps so you have a clean sound and a, a dirty channel. You know, and um, a lot of times when I first started playing, and I couldn't afford an expensive amp. I just got a good amp with a really good clean sound and a really good distorted channel. And then what I did was I just worked the volume knob when I wanted to play my leads because you want your leads to be louder so they could be heard. I just used the volume knob on the guitar and cranked that a little more. Um, so there's lots of different things you could do, but just don't think you know you, there's only one setting and use only one pickup because that's where I get a lot of my tonal variations. That's why I love the Fender Stratocasters because I can get a lot of different sounds out of them. Um, 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 so I can play out of, for instance, I'm playing out of this with Texas Specials. The, those are a little hotter pickups. These are Texas Texas Specials, so they're kind of they have a lot of bite to them. You know, I can play through just the neck pickup. That's this one. A lot of times, the pickup close to the neck that's called the neck pickup, or I could play just out of the bridge pickup. Like I was playing, that's the one close to the bridge. Or like I could play out of these two pickups. It's the second position, or just this one, third, or just these two, fourth, or just this one. Or just this one, right? I like the neck pickup a lot. That's what I like. I use that a lot. A lot of my lead stuff's neck pickup stuff. A lot of people hate that sound. I like it. <laughs> you know, that's just me. That's that Halloween kind of uh, kind of sound. Um, so experiment with your um, with your with your sounds and with your pickups and with your amp settings as far as levels of gain. That's there's so much to cover. I'm going to try to get to it all, but. That's, I'm trying to hit some of the big things. The biggest thing I see with guitars is they're just, they don't spend enough time trying to find that good level of gain. It's just, they always go right to 10. You know what I mean? 
I mean, I experiment even a lot with my tone knobs, and I roll the tone knob off sometime and I get a really cool sound. Or this guitar is a special guitar because I have this. I don't know if you could see that, but it's an actually, it's a push-pull switch on the tone, so I can get a little tone boost by pushing this down, or, or I can keep it up, and again, it gives me a different sound. Let me sh just show you that, just so you know what I'm talking about. You can hear the difference when I play. Like, my tone knob now, I got it pulled up. That's kind of like, that's not a standard feature, but some guitars you can find it with. See, there's one, I'll play the same kind of licks. See the different sound I can get? And that's all out of the back pickup. Now I'm going to switch to the neck pickup. Okay, and I'll play some licks um, uh, through with, the, with, the, with both tone knobs cranked, but I have it in the up position on that pot. I'm just now I'm going to kick that down. There it's down there. Hear the difference? Okay, so you see all the different beautiful, that's why, ah oh man, I love Fender Strats, you know, they're just, they're my favorite. Um, but um, uh, I think all guitars are great. I like Gibsons, I like the Les Pauls, I like Paul Reed Smiths, I like uh, some of the Ibanez stuff. I like, uh, you know, I can't, I'm not here to say ones, I'm not the one that says, oh, this guitar is better than this, which is better. I think they're all great, you know, and you find out what you like. It's all about what you like. It's subjective. I can't say one's better than the next or whatever. It all depends on your ear and what you sound. A lot of people don't like the strats. I like them. A lot of people like them, too. They're pretty popular. Um, but find what you like and get creative, okay? And have fun with the effects, but don't depend on them. Remember, your sound's really coming from your hands, not a pedal. It's just enhancing it, okay? So we'll see you in the next module. Keep, uh, uh, um, um, if you have any questions, remember, try to post them on the forum on our website, nextlevelguitar.com. The forum is free. You don't have to be a paid member to use the forum, okay? So you can post on the forum. Um, um, and if you have questions, put them in there, because if you're asking them, probably everyone wants to know, right? And we'll see you in the next module. Take care and rock on.